My name is Dr. Jerry Barker. I am a radiation oncologist with Baylor Scott & White All Saints Medical Center, Fort Worth. And I have been asked to tell you 10 things that I know about oral cavity cancers, but let's start with a story. So I wanna tell you the story of a patient named Betty, who is 68 years old, and she tells me that she has been smoking her whole life. She says that she has smoked since she was very young, really didn't feel the need to stop. Um, she tells me that even the doctors were smoking back then, but her primary care physician um, continued to uh, bug her about her cigarette smoking. So about 25 years ago, she finally kicked the habit. She then tells me that nothing really happened after that, so she thought she was okay, even from the smoking she had had before. But then very recently, she says that she noticed a little sore on the side of her tongue. And she went to her primary care physician, um, who was concerned and referred her to an ear, nose, and throat doctor who did a biopsy and sure enough, it showed a small cancer. So she had surgery for the cancer. They removed the, the tumor with a small bit of tongue. Fortunately, it was caught very early and this early stage cancer didn't need any more treatment besides just the surgery. And she's cured and she's happy and she's really thankful that she found the tumor when she did. I think that story illustrates very well what life can be like for some of our patients with oral cancers. Now, let's spend some time talking about 10 things that I know about oral cancers. Well, number one, let's start by talking about just the term oral cancer, because the term itself is a little bit confusing. Doctors usually use the term oral cancer in two different ways. There are cancers of the mouth, so things like the tongue and the lips and the cheeks and the gums. We call those oral cavity cancers. And then there are cancers behind the mouth in what we call the oropharynx. These are structures like the tonsils and the very far back or base of the tongue. Now that seems like kind of a small semantics, picky issue, but it's actually really important because these two different parts of the body, the oral cavity and the oropharynx, have two completely different kinds of cancers. That leads us to number two and number three on our list of 10 things to know. Number two, most oral cavity or mouth cancers occur in people who smoke or who have smoked in the past. Now, a lot of us don't really think much about smoking anymore, at least not in the United States, because so many people have stopped smoking over the last several decades. In fact, in 1955, almost half of all adults in the United States smoke cigarettes. But today, that has dropped to less than 15%. Many of us don't really think about smoking or smoking-related cancers as much anymore. But having smoked in the past is still a risk factor for having an oral cancer today. And believe it or not, there's still 30 million adults in the United States who smoke today. And these oral cavity cancers are usually related to smoking. That's different from the oropharynx cancers. So that takes us to number three, oropharynx cancers, the throat cancers, like base of tongue and tonsil cancers, most of those cancers are not caused by smoking any longer. They used to be in the past, but now most of those cancers are caused by a virus known as HPV or the human papillomavirus. This is a virus that has been experiencing an epidemic across the world for the last several decades. We didn't even realize it was happening until the 1990s, but it is unfortunately happening 
with increasing frequency. And today, most adults worldwide have had an exposure or an infection with HPV by the time they're in their teens or 20s. So it's a huge part of the world's population that's been exposed to HPV. And for some reason, a small number of patients actually develop throat cancer because of that old infection that they had when they were younger. It's not many people that make cancer after that infection, but there's so many people in the world that have been infected that quite a number of patients each year have oropharynx cancers. So although the oral cavity or mouth cancers are on the decline as smoking decreases, unfortunately, the oropharynx cancers or the throat cancers are on the increase. Well, number four, some patients will get oral cavity or oropharynx cancers for reasons other than tobacco use or HPV infection. So for example, some patients can get these cancers because of secondhand smoke exposure or because of pollution, like air pollution, or perhaps because of chronic irritation. And sometimes doctors are just surprised that there doesn't seem to be a clear reason uh, for, the re for, for why a patient may have developed one of these oral cavity or oropharynx cancers. Number five, these cancers are not rare. So it's estimated that this year, approximately 500,000 men and women will develop oral cancers. That's about 55,000 in the United States alone. Interestingly, and for reasons we have never fully understood, more than twice as many men will get oral cancers than women. So these cancers are very common. Well, number six, interestingly, most oral cavity and oropharynx cancers are just one histology of cancer, one type of cancer and that is called squamous cell carcinoma. So squamous cell carcinomas are cancers of a lining, in this case, the lining of the mouth and the throat. Patients smoke, the smoke and the carcinogens in the smoke affect the lining of the mouth. And when the HPV virus infects, it infects the lining of the throat. So most of these cancers are lining-related cancers and are squamous cell carcinomas. It's interesting because that's not true in many other parts of the body where you can get a cancer, but it can be one of several different kinds. With oral can cancers, it's usually squamous cell carcinoma. Well, number seven, oral cancers can be prevented. That's good news. First of all, if you don't ever smoke, you have already dramatically reduced your risk of developing an oral cavity cancer. But even for smokers, stopping smoking is associated with a significant reduction in the risk of developing an oral cavity cancer. So those are easy ways to avoid mouth and throat cancers. One other new way to prevent the throat cancers is HPV vaccination. So it turns out that the virus that causes these throat cancers can be prevented. And there are vaccines available now to do just that. These vaccines have been proven to be safe and very effective at preventing infection with HPV and the subsequent cancers that HPV can cause. These vaccines are available now to adults, te teens and adults, all the way up to age 45. And that is a powerful way to reduce the risk of developing these cancers. Number eight, if you can't prevent an oral cancer, you can at least find it early. That's important because finding one of these cancers early means it's more curable. The cure rate is higher the earlier the cancer is found. Now, one way to find these cancers early involves a general principle 
that I like to tell my patients is just a good principle of life. There are certain things that can happen with your health that are just never normal. They may not be cancer, but they deserve to have a doctor's evaluation. And some of these apply to head and neck or oral cancers. So for example, a sore in the mouth that just isn't going away, or spitting up or coughing up of blood, or new pain in the mouth or throat that doesn't stop, or a lump in the neck that doesn't go away after a few days. These things may not be oral cancer, but they do deserve to have a formal evaluation because it's too easy for us to make certain that it's not a cancer. There's one other important way to find oral cavity cancers early, and that's to screen for them. So every year in this community, we have screening events where patients who are at high risk, like current or former smokers, or patients who aren't at high risk, are able to go and have a doctor evaluate their mouth and make sure that they don't see any cancerous or precancerous lesions that are of concern. So stay tuned for screening events in your immediate community. Number nine, what do I do if I am diagnosed with an oral cancer? It turns out there are very effective treatments for oral cancers. For oral cavity cancers, the treatment is usually surgery to remove the cancer and a small area of tissue right around the cancer. When found early, that alone is curative. For the oropharynx cancers or the throat cancers, it's a bit more common that we would use radiation or chemotherapy to try to cure those cancers without needing surgery. And the good news is that when any of these cancers are found early, the cure rate for early stage oral cancer is about 85%. So when found early, these treatments are highly effective and most patients can be cured. And that brings us to number 10, survivors of oral cavity cancers can have excellent quality of life. So particularly when these cancers are found small and early and the treatment can be the least, these patients can live normal lives with very little in the way of side effects from their treatments. And that's good news. All right, well, that's 10 things that I know about oral cancers that I've been able to share with you. So let's summarize. Oral cancers can be avoided, like with smoking cessation or HPV vaccination. They can be found early by patients reporting symptoms quickly or by screening. They can be treated with things like surgery and radiation therapy and chemotherapy. They can be cured with excellent quality of life. And for those patients who are cured, their lives can go on normally.